if you don't set something on fire building one of these things, you missed a pretty good opportunity. I want to take a pile of used 18650 batteries and make them into something usable, like this, for my camper van. I built my own batteries for my camper van from used 18650 batteries. Lithium batteries are dangerous. This is not a how-to. This is what I did. From the recycle bins at Lowe's and Home Depot. I built three sticks in the beginning and they've been running for a year now, but I had some cells left over, so I thought I would add them into the system for the sake of a video. They've all been previously tested, but they've all been charged up and sitting at a storage charge for, I don't know, probably a year now. And I'm gonna see which ones are holding voltage. I'm gonna go through them and the ones that held their voltage can move on. This is a tedious job, but it's gotta be done for safety's sake. Test them for internal resistance, and I'm just gonna run through them all with this. I pulled a few out for low voltage. I pulled some out for high internal resistance. Now comes time to retest them all for capacity. This is a tedious job. Okay, this battery is done. I'm gonna keep cracking them off and we'll put another one in. And I'm gonna do this through all of these, look and see what I got, count how many cells I got, try to start deciding which ones I'm gonna use. Okay, I have chosen my cells and they've all been double tested for the ability to hold a charge. Internal resistance and capacity. Putting these little insulators on everything. It's cheap insurance. I use repacker.com. It's a web-based app that helps me sort my cells into seven equal groups. I add each cell's capacity separated by commas. When all the cells have been entered, I click add cells. Now I have to add the number of cells in series and the number of cells in parallel. Now I click on generate packs and it spits out my seven equal groups which I have to pick out and add them to each individual group. Repacker says this will come in at 29 amp hours. Okay now the web app has shown me which cells go in each group. I have to go through and pick them all out and put them in here in their individual groups of 20. I've got them all sorted into the groups of seven. And you see they look different. They're flip-flopped like in the back of a remote control. Positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. Well, I want to go through and make sure that I don't have none of these cells upside down because that would be bad when I go to weld them all together. And make sure all the positive sides all have their insulators on. Okay. This is what I use to connect all the batteries together. What this does, it will parallel this group together and this group together and bond them as one big cell and then it bridges one big cell to the next big cell and I'm gonna weld it on there like that and I'm gonna start welding these together new welder that I have not used before okay we're gonna try it on four the one I had before we only had three settings oh that did pretty good I'm going to go put a couple more welds on each one of them and then I'm going to branch out and weld them all. Alright, so I'm going to go through and weld all this up. I'm going to flip it over to do the other side. I'll come back. Okay, so this side is done. I looked at it, looked it over twice, make sure I didn't miss any welds. I left the part off where my terminal connection is going to be. I'll put those on last because it'll be a pain in the ass. I'm ready to turn it over and do the other side. Now, this is where things get interesting. And you have to cover things up to make sure you don't create no shorts. Now I got this all covered up. And we're going to weld the battery tabbing on this side. This stuff's a little different. And a little more fancier. These are fuse. 
If something goes wrong with an individual cell, a fuse will pop. This stuff's a little more expensive, it's better material. Let me get that anchor down and I'll be back. I was lax in anchoring down my cover material and right here you can see what happened. This plate slid under the edge of my covering material and made contact with the other plate and shorted the two cells that I had welded already. Okay, so they're all done except for the part on the ends where the power goes in and out. And I have to be real careful how I handle this thing because anything touching is going to melt all my pretty little fuses. Okay, here I am making my end terminals. I cut a piece of tabbing and leave it two extra batteries long. I strip a piece of 10 gauge wire the width of the pack. Then I fold over the extra tabbing and crimp it down and then solder it all together. This is the last piece of tabbing I have to weld on. It's already got the power lead coming off of it. <coughs> I'm gonna let the dog in. Here I'm installing the balance lead. Very important feature for safety and lithium operation. If you don't set something on fire building one of these things, you missed a pretty good opportunity. And that's about as far as I can go until I weld this piece on the other end. I have to put a last balance lead on that. Then I can connect this, and then I can wrap it. All right, so I'm gonna start wrapping this thing up. I'll give it some protection with some Capcom tape. Time to put on some final heavy duty shrink wrap. After the shrink wrap was on, I cut away the excess tape on the ends to allow for airflow. Now it's time for the capacity slash torture test. In the test, I drew 45 amps peak, 1210 watts peak, for a total of 29 amp hours. Exactly like the repacker app said it would be. Now, if you want to see how I use it, Go check out the electrical system video in my camper van. And if you like that stuff, you can go watch all my camper van videos.